Yo. <laughs> what up, pussy? <laughs> you probably like when I call you pussy and shit. See, I'd have called you a little bitch, but pussy got such a better fit. It was so many things I could have called you, Pat. Face it. I could have called you the world's worst best friend or Canada's premier undercover racist. <laughs> See, that shit you said about Jeff and your raps about them tats on his back had me wondering, how could you possibly have known all that? I mean, you made it sound like fact. Like there was no inference. Then I realized best friends usually do have similar interests. So, the shit that you say, it was all whack, son. When I know the apple don't fall too far from the tree that you secretly want to hang the blacks from. Like I said, Marv One is comfortable and loosening up and is starting to use humor. But again, his humor isn't just to get laughs, it's to mock Pat's day. Now there's a series of rumors and schemes about Hollahan being a racist and high, having an Iron Eagle tattoo on his back and such, which Pat's day called attention to in his battle. So Marv One is piggybacking on that idea and drew a logical conclusion that Pat's day must be racist as well. While Pat's day was getting at Marv for being fat, Marv is actually explaining his case against Pat's day, but it gets better. I found out Pat hate black people, but not for reasons you'd assume. It's not really a shocker. It won't surprise too many people in this room. But if he had his way, it wouldn't be a darkie to be found. Because then, Pat's day would be the coolest nigger in town. <laughs> Calling a white rapper a wigger is nothing new. It's been done before. However, Marv One is breaking down the motivations behind Pat Stay's apparent racism. These are jokes, but they're not generic wigger jokes. They're intelligently presented observations expressed using humor. It's not, you're so fat X, Y, and Z. It's, you're a wigger and here's why. The presentation of the humor is very different from how Pat Stay presents his material. He goes on. He knew if the world was lily white and there wasn't a darker spot, then he wouldn't have reminded so much of old boy from barbershop. And I can tell, and I can tell by all his gold nugget jewelry and his very low fade that if he never had him, Pat probably prayed he could grow braids. <laughs> he the type when everybody's white, he like, what's up, my nigga? Until a real nigga come around to this, what's up, my ninja? <laughs> Marv is killing Pat's day with humor. This is how you do jokes in a battle. You don't just say them and make funny faces while doing so. You present them and build on them. Make your case, and that's what I meant when I said a lack of creativity. Anyone can see Marv One is fat. Pointing that out and making numerous reference to it is not going to amaze people on how good of a battler you are, if you're going to keep hitting a big target. Calling a white rapper a wigger isn't going to amaze people either. But what Marv One did was took a scheme about Pat's day being racist, and instead of making references to racism, Marv One explained that Pat's day is a racist because he secretly wants to be black, and then drawn humor from that scheme and set up the scenarios in which Pat's day is constantly trying to pass himself off as black, which is hilarious. And it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> All in the songs drinking Coke 45. Pat, black people don't drink Coke 45. <laughs> Julie. Hey, Julie. Look, we be sad right now. Here we go. <laughs> he gonna front like he can't get a cab right now. <laughs> Black so bad. Pat Stay used it in 
this first round with that aggressiveness. But considering Pat State dropped the aggressiveness and went to the humor, it's only right for Marv 1 to pick up that scheme and once again use Pat Stay against Pat Stay. And it's damn good. See, I used to have love for you, Pat, but you took it too far. I tell you to be yourself, but you obviously don't know who the fuck you are. You Clayton Bigsby ass nigga. Clayton Bigsby, the author? What, you don't think I can write them books? Just because I'm blind don't mean I'm dumb. How could this have happened? A black white supremacist. <laughs> you Clayton Bigsby ass nigga, disrespecting your own race? Pat, if your nose was on fire, I wouldn't spit in your face. Wow. No, yes, I would. I take that back. <laughs> If your nose is on fire, I'll definitely spit in your <laughs> Again, weak closer, but the point was made. Pat Stay doesn't have much to rebuttal here, but if he went ham on Marv like he did in the first round, he'd have this battle in the bag. Let's see what Pat Stay does. Go! I remember he was trying to say Arsenal punked me. Nah, I just couldn't be played for a fool. I ain't one of his little students. He couldn't take me to school. I wasn't tripping over that shit at the end. That's what he wanted me to do. So I turned my back and walked away on him like your father did to you. That was excellent. Relevant and not funny. It was humor with some bite to it. That's how Pat Stay should have utilized jokes. Plus, it was a nice nod to the whole Arsenal incident. And it gets better! And he's right, I did do a blog. It was a pretty deep apology. Cause y'all had me feeling sorry for nothing and suckers was being salty. Now it just makes me laugh like your brother's cerebral palsy and evil thoughts like beating off while he's convulsing. <laughs> Fuck him and Stephen Hawking. He's getting back on his knee material again and this is awesome! But bringing up the retarded thing again in a battle is not the best tactic. He needs some rebuttals and some more impactful material because this is just more of the first round. Not that that's a bad thing, but Marv said some powerful shit in the second and third that Pat just hasn't been able to tackle. However, Pat isn't resorting to humor. <laughs> no mercy. Yeah, I'm a drunk. The liquor hurts me. I pour some out for your dead homies, but I'm thirsty. I'm on some other shit. I hope when your father fucking split, he called your mama bitch, raped you, and sucked your retarded brother's dick. <laughs> a freak show, my bitch. It's like dousing with a cheat code. Inspect a gadget, pip slap, shattering your cheekbone. I creep low, then pounce like an animal in beast mode. Bounce if you see me start growling in my teeth show. I go nuts at will like Uncle Phil. Shoot your brother in the face and say he must have fell. Get drunk as hell and tell Chuck Liddell to go fuck himself. alcoholic. The fuck did you think? Welcome to Canada, you fucking moron. Everybody drinks. Excellent bit of technical ability, but again, I can't help but feel a decline in his bars. Almost as if he's making an excuse, and I think this is what's underlining his performance. It's kind of hard to explain, but I feel like Pat Stay failed he had to not only prove himself, but explain himself. It's almost like he's not battling Marv, but rather directing his comments at the haters. I think that's the best way to put it, because even Marv said Pat Stay's drinking isn't the problem. Pat's problem is not him holding his liquor. So Marv wasn't getting on Pat Stay for that, so... I can't be the only person who sees this. Anyway. Aside from that shit, you're a has-been. You'll never get signed rapid. You're the most annoying shit to pop up on the net since live Jasmine. <laughs> that was a joke, and it wasn't a ha-ha joke. Pat Stay said it with a straight face and without smiling. And it wasn't a joke based on him being fat or old or anything like that. So, props to Pat Stay. <laughs> if, if your ride crashes on the drive back and you die, I'll cry laughing. 
If you fly back, I'll pay disaster to hijack it and crash it like, DIE FAGGOT! Here we go, the beginning of some controversy. Let's see it. Speaking of bombs, I got some shit I need to get off my chest. Of course I'm bitter. They paid him twice what I got. The hell y'all expect? I'll do what the fuck I want. Don't tell me to show respect on the set. I have no controller like an Xbox Connect. I never wanted a title shot. The chain belongs to Sketch. But everyone knows if I wanted that shit, I'd yank it off his neck. Wow. Yeah. And I don't and I don't have to lie. I don't have to lie and say I, who the fuck you talking to, buddy? Don't just get fucking break my shit off. No, fuck it. Shut the fuck up. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. Keep it up. Yo, don't stop me. Fuck it. Fuck it. That's my ending bar. I say, who's Sketch Menace? Some fucking dude Jeff's friends with. But he knows he gets all his ratings because he's a fucking sucker, so suck a dick. Don't fucking talk to him my shit. I'll punch your head off. Yeah. That's right. On his mean shit again. I can only hope that he uses this on the source because anything less would get Pat Stay raped easy. With Pat Stay closing his bars there, the match was over and ultimately the battle came out in Marv 1's favor, which I agree with. And I think Soul Khan's assessment is the best one and the one that I agree with the most. Hey everybody, it's your man Soul Con. Time for a King of the Dot slumber party. So be sure to buy Bad Information Flight Dish. It's a game of life by Chris Gibson, the Midnight After by Eloquence, and 24 7's Empty Bottles uh, EP. The room full of empty bottles, that's all I gotta say. Here's the thing uh, I voted for Marv for the following reasons. Not because I was offended at jobs at the autistic or the dead or anyone else incapacitated uh, temporarily or permanently, but rather because I felt that Marv Moore directly addressed Pat in a way that I felt was appropriate given the circumstances surrounding the battle. He brought the history into it, he brought what, even if that's not Pat's character, battling is a perception game, and he built this story that people lent credit to. Pat himself, I thought, like, I thought it was tremendous. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, like, it's similar like the Ilmag Bender battle where both people did fucking incredibly. But at the end of the day, I felt that what Pat did wasn't as directly assaulting uh, what Marv came across as to me. Like, like I said, it's a perception game. You deconstruct the, what the person's made themselves out to be. Um, and I think Pat, while rapping fluidly, cleverly, and, and full of vivid in imagery, I think some of it was wasted when he could have done what he does best, and that's just fucking go for the throat. Therefore, I gave it to Mark 1. Pause. Shout out to King of the Dot. Wonderful day, wonderful night to come. Uh, Black Hammer White Light! Black Hammer White Light. That sounds biased. Alright, peace, y'all. In the wake of the battle, another controversy rose. According to Pat's day, Bishop Brigante told Marv Pat's bars. Marv 1 was asked about this in an interview and denied that Bishop informed him, but nonetheless, the gauntlet was laid down and Pat Stay challenged Bishop to a battle. Bishop accepted but added a stipulation. At the moment, no one knows where the beef is between Pat Stay and Bishop, but needless to say, Pat Stay is on a roll of gathering controversy, and if he does battle Bishop, it'll be yet again another high profile battle. As for Marv 1, he expressed that there wasn't anyone he was interested in battling, but a tweet a few days ago expressed that he may be interested in battling Head Ice after all. Okay, so that'll do it for me and uh, this this battle review um, for now. Uh, here's the thing, the reason why I'm so hesitant to do these videos is because I'm worried about the megabyte count on my computer. The thing is, these files are like... 800 megs to like two to three gigs and I don't want to have to sift through all of that material because the thing is I record it straight like you know I have the script and I read it but you know sometimes I stumble and you know get tongue-tied and I mix my words and you know I have to do take after take and that takes up space um, so I'm really not gonna try and do these until I get a camera um, because that way I'll have the, the material on my camera and I'll just be able to, you know, inject the, uh, the thumb drive in there and just, you know, edit off the cuff without having to sift through takes and having my files get bigger and bigger 
um, as they go on. Um, so these are going to be kind of scarce, and I know you guys enjoy these, and thank you very much for sitting through them and watching them, but they're going to be kind of scarce only because of that until I get a camera, because that way it'll be a lot better, and I'll be able to do a little bit, a few more dynamic things uh, with it that I haven't been able to do um, previously, and um, the audio quality will definitely be better. And yeah, it'll just be uh, it'll just be better for the the project all around um, when I have a camera. So um, these are going to be scarce, and I do have one I'm going to do in mind. But again, don't expect that anytime soon. Um, maybe like in the next couple of months or so. But don't don't hold me to that. Anyway, that'll do it for me. Keep watching the arena. Keep supporting Rogue Gallery. And thanks, you guys are awesome. Also. I'm trying to get together some kind of battling event, maybe sometime in March. Um, if you guys out there, if you can battle, you know, hit me up on my Yugo Strange channel. Link is below. You know, hit me up or, you know, make a response video to this video of you spitting some lines and whatnot, and we'll hook it up. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do something. Not really trying to create a league or anything, but just trying to, you know, get some battle thing going and whatnot, you know, just to have fun, you know. Um, so, yeah, that'll do it for me. I'm out. Peace.